When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? For the union makes us strong. Solidarity greetings, APW delegates. <laughs> greetings to all of you fighters for justice. I salute your passion and dedication to the cause of workers' rights and labor dignity, your day in and day out fight to improve the lives of postal workers and to build a more just society for all working men and working women. I welcome to you, you to this convention and look forward to your participation in this grand four-day union meeting. And it is indeed an honor to stand before you again to present the State of Our Union message. And since we are part of a broad working class and a broad working class struggle, we cannot analyze the State of Our Union in isolation. Brothers and sisters, we are working, living, and struggling in a time where there is an all-out war on workers, our families, our communities, our standards of living, our rights, and our organizations. And for the moment, and I emphasize for the moment, corporate America is having far too much say and sway over the working class. Make no mistake about it. It's them versus us, Main Street versus Wall Street. It's capital versus labor and in part due to intense union busting over the years. Union membership is now at its lowest level in 100 years. And unionized and non-unionized workers alike are paying a heavy price. Our precious right to vote is under severe attack. In the post-Citizens United period, elections are increasingly and openly bought and sold. Corporate lobbyists and politicians revamped the tax structure, shifting the burden from the wealthy to the working. And government policies abound that enrich the three complexes, the private medical industrial complex, putting big farmers profit over single payer Medicare for all. The private military industrial complex, with endless wars for profit while our infrastructure collapses and our pensions disappear at home. And the private prison industrial complex, which promotes jail over education. And by design, we have a winner-take-all election system that perpetuates the choice between the lesser of two evils. And this political system largely answers to Wall Street rather than Main Street, stacks the deck against the development of a needed union-based political party. In an, and in our rigged economy, the Wall Street crooks, sisters and brothers, are doing just fine. Are they not bailed out from the economic crisis that they caused, while the 99% of us are still suffering from the layoffs and the underemployment and the home foreclosures and the wage freezes, and the austerity, and declining standards of living. And income inequality is at historic levels. Just listen to this. One half of 1% of the U.S. population has the combined wealth of the bottom 90%. And CEOs of fast food chains like Starbucks make $9,000, not a month, not a week, not a day, but an hour while they resist the workers' demands for $15 an hour and a union. And the federal minimum wage remains through Republican and Democratic Party administrations alike at a criminal $7.25 an hour. And in the public sector, where we proudly work, the public good is being undermined. Public services that enrich people's lives, public libraries, parks, hospitals, transportation, utilities, 
schools, and yes, public postal services are under extreme attack aimed at privatization. To understand the efforts of postal privatization, sisters and brothers, it's pretty simple. Just follow the money and the $68 billion or so of annual revenue, no tax dollars, revenue generated by the users of the Postal Service, that the corporate powers and behemoths like DHL and FedEx and UPS want their greedy hands on. But since the people trust the post office and trust all of you and our co-postal workers, outright privatization is not so easy. Instead, the privatizers seek to degrade as a means to their end. Keep the lines long, hours short, delay the mail, deliver late into the night. This is the aim of the recent rollback of postal rates and the bipartisan 2006 Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act, which created the congressionally manufactured financial crisis being used to choke the Postal Service today. All this is part of our reality. But sisters and brothers, there's another truth as well. Workers are standing up and fighting back. A message so powerfully delivered by the hundreds of thousands of courageous Wisconsin workers who sparked a new period of labor activism. Fast food and retail workers are leading the charge for living wages and making real gains. Our unionized brother and sister auto workers stood firm in recent contract negotiations and largely eliminated the divisive two-tier wage systems at the big three auto companies. 40,000 unionized workers took, to, took on the greedy and huge multinational Verizon company in a 46-day strike, and brothers and sisters, they won. The entire labor movement, entire labor movement stands united against the Trans-Pacific Partnership and other rotten trade deals that enrich multinationals at the expense of workers everywhere. And the APW, all of you sisters and brothers, and the APW are actively in the midst of this good fight. In the two years since our last national convention, they have been challenging and excited as we've worked to transform our union into a fighting and activist organization. And together, we've made many advances. And many of these you've seen in the video that preceded me. But front and center has been the fight for a new collective bargaining agreement with the United States Postal Service covering 200,000 workers, which, by the way, followed the successful completion of the long-delayed negotiation in our support services division. And with your support and the guidance of the delegates of the 2014 National Convention, this leadership refused, refused to engage in another round of concessionary bargaining. I was honored to be your lead negotiator and proud that we made progress on most of our major goals, securing real wage increases, strengthening job security, defending the cost of living and no layoff protections, and enhancing the career and full-time workforce. But as union leaders, you played a crucial role by being part of and embracing our nationwide contract campaign. Your contract action teams educated your coworkers educated the public. You organized the buttons, the stickers, the union gear. You got hundreds of thousands of postcards signed and delivered to the Postmaster General of the United States. I stand with postal workers. You sent a powerful message and helped get good tentative agreements, brothers and sisters, good tentative agreements with management that found their way into the final arbitration award. You build solidarity and unity, which carries forward and carries forward to strengthen our everyday battles for workplace justice. I congratulate all of you on the successful contract battle for good service 
good jobs, and a good contract. Congratulations, sisters and brothers. <clears throat> While we focused immense time and collectively, this was a collective battle with many people making contributions at the headquarters level. We focused immense time and resources on preparation, negotiations, mediation, and interest arbitration in this victorious fight. But we also made advances throughout the two years on many other important fronts. Our union leadership, of all of our divisions, won major arbitration cases and reached significant settlements with management that improved job security. Examples include gaining thousands of jobs with post plan, 56 million in back pay while defending bargaining unit work, and protection against violations of subcontracting and maintenance and our motor vehicle divisions. Building on the outstanding settlement on the filling of residual vacancies, the union has succeeded in converting 33,000 non-career PSEs to career since the last convention, sisters and brothers. What a, what a wonderful, life-changing Union One event. And I'm sure there are people in this room that have lived it. What a wonderful, life-changing Union One event. Thanks in part to so much of the work you all have done to enforce the contract, to protect residual vacancies, and so on. And remember, this is also a great opportunity to bring new members and new activists into the wonderful Union cause. Last convention, I spoke of the need for to build a grand alliance to save our public postal service. It's now a reality and consists of 140 organizations, including 80 national labor, faith-based, community, environmental, and civil rights organizations. Actor, activist Danny Glover is featured in a terrific Alliance video, and he spoke on behalf of the Alliance on the opening day of contract negotiations. The Alliance has brought their concerns directly to the Postmaster General, has a social media presence, and recently concluded five regional field hearings on the importance of the Public Postal Service to our communities. The Public Postal Service, sisters and brothers, will only survive and thrive with the support of the people of this country and their fight to protect it and keep it. The APW has also spearheaded the campaign for postal banking. There's been a lot of talk already this morning about that and how important. The legal loan sharking, predatory, payday lending, check cashing industry preys on tens of millions of the working poor. And the Postal Service, with its highly trained and dedicated workforce, right in this room and beyond, and its presence in every community, is so well positioned to provide paycheck cashing, and other basic financial services performed by post offices, commonly performed by post offices all over the world. Winning this fight will strengthen our public postal service and protect postal jobs. And what about the Staples fight, sisters and brothers? What about it? Since we took to the streets of Chicago in the last convention and proclaimed, what did we proclaim? The U.S. mail. Let's hear it, the U.S. mail. And it's still not for sale. And since the last convention, Staples stock has dropped 50%. They're shuttering stores. Its merger with Office Depot went down the tubes and was rejected by the courts thanks to the efforts of the APW. By the way, Staples had to pay Office Depot a small sum of $250 million for that deal going down. And Staples CEO Ron Sargent has been forced out. The Staples movement is still going strong. Leafleting at Staples stores is constantly turning away customers. Some of you have told me those stories since I've seen you here. And we've won significant victories, as the video talked about, at the National Labor Relations Board. And we have the ongoing support 
of our sister unions and many allies. Brothers and sisters, this is not just a fight around Staples. Plain and simple, this is a campaign to disrupt and stop management's plans to privatize retail jobs throughout this country. And you saw the great news in the video where Postmaster General, former Postmaster General Patrick Donahoe, you remember him? Admitted, you saw the tape, that now it's tougher for the post office to find retail partners. And brothers and sisters, that means we're winning. Are you in for finishing this job until Staples gets out of the postal business? <laughs> Two years ago, an alliance with the four postal unions was brand new. And since then, the relationship has grown stronger. Challenges remain and always will over jurisdictional issue. But look at how much the four unions have in common. And so all four unions are part of the Grand Alliance to save the public postal service. All four postal unions are part of the campaign for postal banking, without regard of what craft is going to end up doing the work. All four unions have worked together and united in joint legislative efforts and in the fight to stop delaying America's mail. Our sister postal unions continue to support the Staples boycott. An NALC president and our good brother Fred Rolando joined us in solidarity on the opening day of negotiations and sat with us right at the table to send management a unified message. I'm a firm believer and always have been and always will be in one postal union. Short of that, short of that, we must unite wherever we can in our common fight. For as the old union saying goes, united we stand, divided we fall. On the legislative front, let's face it, difficult and hostile times. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Congress has refused to address the pre-funding financial crisis they created, and White House nominees to the Board of Governors include the King of Privatizers, James Miller, and payday loan lobbyist, Mickey Barnett. We have worked with our sister postal unions and even postal management to gain legislative relief that's good for the Postal Service and good for postal workers. And we have begun to build new relationships that did not previous, previously exist with Republican members of Congress from rural states as part of our fight to restore and protect good postal services. Two new bills, as you know, have been recently introduced in Congress, one on the House side and one on the Senate side. And they are far from perfect. The easy path for us as leadership will just reject them, say no way. But that, sisters and brothers, will definitely leave us empty handed. So this leadership will stay deeply involved in the debate over how to improve the bills so that we can support them if possible. And when postal reform that fixes and addresses the pre-funding crisis and other crucial issues facing the Postal Service. As part of our general fight for justice, we participate in the democracy initiative to get corporate money, to drive corporate money out of politics. And we defend with every ounce that we have the cherished right to vote. We stand with the people of Flint and Ferguson in the fight for civil rights and social justice. We have been in the streets and the halls of Congress opposing the TPP and we unite with workers everywhere in the fight for $15 an hour and a union. We did join, many of you were out there, we did join with our 39,000 CWA and IBW unionists during their victorious Verizon strike. And APW is proud to be part of the House of Labor and the AFL-CAO and UNI, the Union Network International for this is truly an international 
struggle as well. Let me share a few comments because we're going to have discussion later in the week for sure on the important 2016 U.S. presidential election and all the other elections involved. I believe that 2016, that the presidential primary was truly historic in that millions, millions, particularly young people, proclaimed that they were dissatisfied with our country's rigged political system. Millions, millions responded to Senator Sanders' call for a political revolution with its bold, pro-working class message of living wages, free college tuition, Medicare for all, defending the public good and taking on Wall Street greed. Did they not, sisters and brothers? And I would submit to you that even many of the votes for Donald Trump, for the anti-union, anti-worker, race and religious baiting Donald Trump, reflect a legitimate disgust with politics as usual. Now, I fully respect that every individual's choice at the ballot box is a personal one, personal decision, and that includes me as well. You know that the APW National Executive Board was on the cutting edge of history when we endorsed Senator Bernie Sanders, Sanders who is an outstanding and is an outstanding friend and supporter of postal workers. <clears throat> and so many of you, so many of our activists around the country were indeed enthusiastically feeling the burn. In light of the results of the presidential primary, and given the stark choices, the National Executive Board has now endorsed Democratic Party nominee Hillary Clinton. And it will be up. It will now be up to this convention to decide the best way forward for the APW in this 2016 election. But remember, and keep in mind, that elections come and go, but the struggle continues. And whoever sits in the White House, the main challenge going forward will be how to build and the building of a powerful movement for social and economic justice. And this, brothers and sisters, would be the same case even if Bernie Sanders had been elected President of the United States. And we should, as postal workers, work hard to elect pro-worker candidates no matter which party they are from. And despite the fact that it's my belief, and I think many of our members believe, that both major political parties have largely failed the working class, we do know we have numerous terrific friends and allies in Congress and throughout state houses and state senates. Well, I believe the APW should also be involved in promoting issue-based ballot initiatives at election times, such as living wage provisions that uplift workers and our families and communities, and many of you are, and I salute all of you. But while we engage in the 2016 election, I appeal to all of you, and I hope that we will find a way out as we go forward of the lesser of two evil choices where you're continually offered at election time and find our way to build an independent political movement where we are not taken for granted by politicians, where elections are not bought and sold, and where our representatives are truly accounted to the people, sisters and brothers. So even with a lot of solid progress between our two conventions, we have a very challenging road ahead. There are powerful and organized forces that work against us and work against the public good, unions, and workers' rights. And together, we will continue the fight to improve working conditions and implement the national level settlement we negotiated in June to speed up the grievance procedure. Together, we will continue to resist the slash and burn policies of former PMG Donahoe that are put into place to undermine and degrade good service to the people of this country and with it our job security. And we will continue to build the fight for enhanced 
and, and expanded services, including financial services and vote by mail. We will continue the fight for needed postal reform and to promote pro-postal nominees to the Postal Board of Governors and the Postal Regulatory Commission. And we'll continue to build up the campaign, stand up for safe jobs in every corner of every post office. Brothers and sisters, it's unacceptable to everybody in this room and every postal worker that comes to work that 42,000 of our brothers and sister postal workers were injured last year. We certainly have a lot of work to do. We, can t we will continue the good fight to stop and slow down the plant consolidations and closings and to return to overnight service standards. And we will continue the strides we've made in developing more and better communication with our members, such as teletown halls, and an ever greater, greater presence in the national news media to spread the message in defense of the public good and the public postal service. We will reignite our efforts to organize the entire postal industry. And with your guidance, with your guidance, we will soon begin serious preparations for the next round of collective bargaining while we build more power and leverage, which will then manifest itself in ever greater improvements in our collective bargaining agreements. And with all of you, we will continue to build an activist fighting union and continue to encourage, educate, and learn from our new generation of APW activists. Yes, sisters and brothers, we have powerful and organized adversaries. But I got a question for you. Are there more of us than them? You bet there is. And when we learn to better unite and fight and defeat all those divide and conquer schemes that divide us from black and white, and native born from immigrant, men from woman, public sector from private sector, craft from craft, workers at home from workers abroad, we will realize our power and we will win. Brothers and sisters, will everybody under 35 years of age please stand up? You have to tell the truth. That's the future of our union. Stand up if you, and stay standing up now. You can't sit down. Can't sit down, you gotta stay stand up because we're not done. Are there any participants in the room in the great 1970 postal strike? Stand up. Stand up all national officers. Stand up local and state presidents. Stand up executive board members from your local and states. Stand up all shop stewards. How about the editors in the room? Stand up. Stand up first time delegates. All right. Stand up retirees who plowed the fields ahead of us. Stand up all delegates and proud APW members. Now, shake hands with the person to the right of you and shake hands to the person to the left of you. Look across the table and give him a fist bump. What do you see, sisters and brothers? What do you see? You see somebody just like you and me, am I right? We may come we may come in all different sizes, shapes, colors. We arrived on these shores with different histories and different stories. We come from different religions, ethnic backgrounds, gender, sexual orientation. We have varying political beliefs from Tea Party to socialist and everything in between. 
but our blood flows in the same direction, sisters and brothers, in the direction of justice. Our hearts beat in unity in the fight for more workers' power. And do we not share the passion for a better life for ourselves and our families and are ready to pass that on to the young workers and future leaders that are following us? We are the activist core and the firm foundation of the American Postal Workers Union. We believe in a vibrant, vibrant public postal service for generations to come. We are fighters for justice, are we not? So give, your, give yourselves and each other a standing ovation, sisters and brothers. From, from the workplaces, from the workplaces to the streets, from our neighborhoods to the halls of Congress, it is time to ever more seriously educate, organize, mobilize, and galvanize. We will not be able to solely elect and litigate or hope and grieve our way out of these difficult and dangerous times, sisters and brothers. We will have to fight our way out with a movement of millions using all the tools at our disposal. So we must build a crusade to organize the unorganized. We must continue to organize, organize a crusade to save the public postal service. We must be part of a crusade to save our unions. We must be part of a crusade for social and economic justice. Let's continue to stand up and fight back hand in hand with each other, all postal unions, all labor, the public and our many community allies. So let's have a great convention, sisters and brothers, and as the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass said, and he was right, without struggle there can be no progress and power concedes nothing without a demand. Our last two years shows us the truth in those statements. Mobilized and united, fighting for justice, we have made real progress. We can forge ahead, build our power, and win. Carry on in solidarity forever, sisters and brothers.